Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We are in Crossing Brooklyn Ferry, this truly classic poem, and we now turn to uh, passage number seven. It is really, really one of the most remarkable passages because of the intimate language. Some are going to uh, really see this as the reason they love Leaves of Grass so much. It's almost as if Whitman is going to be saying, I'm watching, I'm watching, and of course this idea of the eye in the sky as something watching and as an artist that has some sense that there will be an audience long after the fact. We've seen this already in part in Leaves of Grass, and we're going to see it now really powerfully. The word you will get used in very intimate ways seven times. Now the assumption, and I'm hoping this is the case, is that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, Talks with Walt, the title of our playlist down the left-hand side, and that you've got your own copy of Leaves of Grass and, you, and you're just annotating it up all over the place. We started at the very beginning with inscription stuff. We're going to talk in this lecture about starting from Pamanak. Hey, you guys, when we did starting from Pamanak, you'll remember I said, so much is going to happen later in Leaves of Grass that will be have been set up here for us. You'll see it again. Um, and then uh, obviously up to and including everything that we've done through Brooklyn Ferry, crossing Brooklyn Ferry, uh, uh, up through passage number six. Now, uh, just to begin this, this uh, project, can you remember uh, the last lines of Song of Myself? Um, some of you will maybe say, oh yeah, this is fun to go back and look at this, right? The spotted owl swoops by and accuses me, complains of my gab, my loitering. I too am not a bit tamed, I too am untranslatable, and then of course the famous lines, I sound my barbaric yacht over the roofs of the world. The last scud of day holds back for me, it flings my lightness after the rest, and true as any on the shadowed wiles, it coaxes me to the vapor of the dusk. I depart as air, I shake my white locks at the runaway sun, I effuse my flesh in eddies and drift in lacy jags, of course this idea of the eddies and the waves of the river obviously come to mind. I bequeath myself to the dirt to grow from the grass I love. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. You will hardly know who I am or what I mean, but I shall be good health to you nevertheless and fiber, uh, filter and fiber your blood. Failing to fetch me at first, keep encouraged. Missing me one place, search another. I stop somewhere waiting for you. We commented on the fact that that last word, a song of myself, is the word you. Let's now turn to passage number seven and just enjoy what's happening. By the way, at the conclusion of our lecture here, we're going to take a look at uh, another poem at the end of Leaves of Grass, so long that we'll exegete in detail later, but we'll at least enjoy some of the echoes that are being set up. Passage seven. Closer yet, I approach you. What thought you have of me now, I had as much of you. I laid in my stores in advance. I considered long and seriously of you before you were born. Who was to know what should come home to me? Who knows, but I am enjoying this. Who knows for all the distance, but I am as good as looking at you now for all you cannot see me. Now, I've had students that read this and they just say, okay, I've never read anything quite like this, where literally the poet writer, the artist, is speaking to me from long ago as if he knew I would be holding him or her at this moment in time. There's something kind of bizarre, as some students even call it creepy, about this kind of recognition. Let's now go through it. Notice, we'll begin with the word closer. Um, we're going to see this use in, as I ebbed, um, with the ocean of life in passage number two. Yet, he says, I approach you. So, get the sense, right? I mean, crossing Brooklyn Ferry, he's literally on the boat, going across the river, and as he's coming to the other shore, we're obviously coming to the end of the poem with passages 7, 8, to, and 9 to finish, and he, it's as if he can see you, and he's coming closer to you, the reader of this poem, right? Notice here, I approach you, not you approach me, but I approach you. Of course, in the process 
of coming towards the shore. As I approach you, obviously you're approaching me even though you're standing still. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a powerful way to think about the game that he's playing here, the word picture that he's game, that the game that he's playing. And then he'll say it this way, uh, and that, words, that word you, again, seven times directly, directly to you, the reader. What thought you have of me now, notice the intimacy and the immediacy of this, of this phrase, I had as much of you. I laid in my stores in advance. In other words, all of the work that I, that I did was for you. It's remarkable. It's remarkable. In other words, it's as if he knew that someday talks with Walt would be happening. And so he's speaking directly to us. And he says it this way. I considered long. Now, this word long, I mean, just think about the way that long has been used throughout Leaves of Grass. I mean, uh, so many times in Song of Myself it comes to mind. And he says, seriously, we'll, we'll see that word in uh, Song of Myself, passage 33, right? Um, uh, the, the, the notion of imposed seriously. Of you before you were born. In other words, long before you were born, I knew you were coming, and that's why I've got this project called Leaves of Grass, and I'm sharing it with you. That is to say that generations are linked, crossing, do you get it, by virtue of his poetry. Uh, few writers before Whitman ever tried to play a game like this, and Whitman somehow understood he would be read far more after his death than during his lifetime. Notice there is a break and he'll play this game now of these rhetorical questions, and we've got three question marks now to finish this passage. That's quite remarkable how he says this in these rhetorical questions. Who was to know what should have come home to me? By the way, although he loves the word home in Leaves of Grass, this is the only time he uses it this way, to come home to me. It is a remarkable idea, and you'll remember that in passage one of Crossing Brooklyn Ferry, returning home is also used. So now at the end, and we're going to see this now in these lines and in the lines of passage 8 and 9, almost like repeating word for word almost entire lines that he will repeat echo. And many have pointed out why this is such a melodic set of lines in Crossing Brooklyn Ferry. Love to read it out loud, for example. And there's whole groups of people. No kidding. That will get together at different places, many of them, of course, right there at the Brooklyn Bridge, and will read aloud these lines because they love to hear them read out loud uh, because of these repetitions that we'll, that we'll hear about. Who knows? Second, who knows? Uh, who knows? But I am enjoying this. You'll remember in Song of the Open Road, passage 13, enjoying all uh, without labor, right? You, uh, you'll remember this idea as well of the notion that life is full of joy, expectations, happiness, Scooby Snacks, as we love to say in 303, even though they are an illusion. What a wonderful illusion. And the idea that Whitman seems to be having fun. Guys, I told you this early in, uh, in our study. You'll remember that I quoted those lines from Song of Myself uh, in the game, right? Watching and learning to wait in the game. He sees it all as a game, and here he says, who knows? Maybe right now I'm enjoying the fact that literally as I'm writing these words, I know that someday they will be read by not everybody, not crowds, although that's there in this poem, but by you. In other words, you're the reason I did all of this. You, personally. There is a personal connectivity in the reading of Leaves of Grass that few writers have ever been able to accomplish. And Whitman just does it almost almost naturally. It is. It, it does seem almost natural. Um, by the way, this Who Knows uh, project takes us all the way back to the very beginning of our study and starting from Pomenog passage number seven. Uh, you'll, you'll maybe remember this one. He says, I too, of course we're familiar with that project from Brooklyn Ferry, I too following many and followed by many inaugurate a religion. I descend into the arena it may be I am destined to utter the loudest cries there, the winners pealing shouts. Who knows? They may rise from me yet and soar above everything. This construction of who knows is the echo that you're remembering from an earlier study. Who knows? For all the distance, remember in passage 3, distance avails not. But I am as good as looking at you now 
for all you cannot see me. Now, this takes us to passage one of Song of Myself, and I, I promised you guys I wouldn't do too much of this, and I'm fighting to not do this in every line. It, it is true, guys, guys. By this point in reading Leaves of Grass, and I would say in many ways that when we come to the end of Brooklyn Ferry, we have covered really so many amazing sets of lines, but the echoes are just remarkable, which is why, again, I say, if you're going to read your T.S. Eliot and Four Quartets and Burton Norton, my words echo thus in, 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 in your mind. This notion of echoing, I think T.S. Eliot, more than any other poet, I think he learned it from Whitman. Um, do, you, hey, do you remember these lines? Just this idea of, of good, right? You remember this? I celebrate myself and sing myself in what I assume you shall assume for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. This phrasing of as good, just as well, we might say, right? But I am as good as uh, looking at you now. Do you remember Song of Myself, Passage 4, in regards to this, uh, in regards to this looking project? I mean, let's just, let's just play this game. Um, he says, apart from the pulling and hauling stands what I am. Again, that I am construction from Exodus, right? Stands amused, complacent, compassionating, idle, unitary, looks down, is erect, or bends an arm, or an impalpable certain rest. Looking with side curved head, curious, what will come next? Both in and out of the game, of course, the lines we were referencing a second ago, and watching and wondering at it. Backward I see in my own days where I sweated through fog with linguists and contenders. I have no mockings or arguments. I witness and wait. Notice how he plays this game of looking at you now. For all, you cannot see me. Now notice that we're calling this set of, of talks, talks with Walt. How compelling is that, right? And of course, this idea of sight, go back to starting from Pominot number 13, and, uh, and I'll play this game one last time with you to remember these opening lines. Was somebody asking to see the soul? See your own shape. Remember what he said about body earlier in, in, uh, in, in uh, Brooklyn Ferry? See your own shape and countenance, persons, substance, Beasts, the trees, the running rivers, the rocks and sands, of course, the running rivers will immediately think of the East River, which is the game that we're playing here. What an amazing set of lines that Whitman is somehow able to, before there is audio, right? Before people do video, for, the, for example, to give to somebody that maybe even is yet unborn. Here you've got Whitman playing a very similar kind of game. Well, what are we going to do with... Um, with this uh, set of lines now at 2A. Well, I would argue that Whitman is suggesting that the true artist sees beyond themselves to something that's coming. They have that ability, as we've said so many times in other lectures, we said it is about Milton, we said this about Shakespeare, we've said this about so many great writers. Virginia Woolf comes to mind. They somehow are able to capture everything that came before. And then they're able to somehow put that together, integrate that together into some kind of amazing whole that will produce the artwork that, of course, we're looking at now. It's an amazing thing. All great art, therefore, has to begin with some element of faith. That is to say, some conviction of legacy. I'm doing this because I know somebody coming down the line is going to look at it, see it, experience it, hear it, whatever. At 2B, the use of you here, this intimate language that he's able to construct, is quite, is quite remarkable. Now, at 3A, and I kind of promised this at the beginning of the, of the lecture, and so let's go to it now. I want to go now to uh, the very end of Leaves of Grass, and I'm, I'm already setting you up for, hey, how long is this crossing going to take of reading all of Leaves of Grass together? Well, it's going to take a while to get through all the poems, but at some point in the end, we're going to come to um, Songs of Party. And we're going to be at the very last, and this is the poem called So Long, which is great because the word so long, the phrase so long, was a phrase used not just by sailors, but also, according to historians, by prostitutes. It's a great, it's a great phrase, so long, you know, and, we, and it became part of, uh, a part of American parlance for quite some time, although you don't hear it as much today. But the opening lines of So Long will tie right away Brooklyn Ferry uh, to it. The opening lines of So Long, to conclude I announce what comes after me. I remember I said before my leaves sprang at all, I would raise my voice jocund and strong with references to consummations. And then he says this, the best of me then 
when no longer visible, for toward that I have been incessantly preparing. What is there more that I lag in pause and crouch extended with unshut mouth? Is there a single final farewell? My songs cease. I abandon them. From behind the screen where I hid, I advance personally, solely to you. Camarado, and of course we'll We'll enjoy that because we've heard it several times, obviously, Song of the Open Road most recently. Camarero, this is the book. Who touches this touches a man. Is it night? Are we here together alone? It is I you hold and who holds you. I spring from the pages into your arms. Decrease calls me forth. Oh, how your fingers drowse me. Your breath falls around me like dew. Your pulse lulls the drummings of my ears. I feel emerged from head to foot. Delicious. Enough. Enough. Oh, deed impromptu and secret. Enough. Oh, gliding present. Enough. Oh, summed up past. Dear friend, whoever you are, take this kiss. I give it especially to you. Do not forget me. I feel like one who has done work for the day to retire a while. I receive now again of my many translations from my avatars ascending while others doubtless await me. An unknown sphere, more real than I dream, more direct darts, awakening rays about me. So long. Remember my words. I may again return. I love you. I depart from materials. I am as one disembodied, triumphant dead. I share these lines with you because if you've been reading with us, it's very possible that you're getting a bit tired, feeling like Dante the Pilgrim, and you're ready to say to Virgil the Guide, I've done enough. I, I'm tired. And, and of course, Virgil will, uh, will say in Canto 24 to the Dante the Pilgrim, up on your feet, this is no time to, 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 uh, to tire. The man who lies asleep will never wake in fame and desire. The, the idea of, of the longer ladder yet to climb. We've got more to go. But that so long set of lines that's coming near the end of Leaves of Grass, that'll motivate us to say, let's keep going with our crossing, finally at 3B. Does this kind of language at all excite you? Does it creep you out? Um, uh, and, and how about this one? Who are you looking at in 500 years, right? Before they were born, that is to say. It almost sounds like a Zen cone of a kind, right? And, uh, of course, now we are moving, crossing, towards the end of this ride of the ferry with passages eight and nine to finish. I hope that you're enjoying this crossing. Thank you.